Hey guys, this is Dimitri with Joe's Gaming and Electronics coming at you with a highly requested video of how to do a battery replacement on your Solo Pros. So to, the, to get to the battery, you're going to be taking apart the left side of the headphones and all the tools that you're going to see me using in this video to do this specific repair. We do sell them and have them available on our website. The link will be in the description down below. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and start by removing the ear pad on the left side. I'm just going to use a pry tool to do that. To remove the ear pad, you just want to go underneath and just kind of pull it up a little bit. You want to make sure that you're not hooking the speaker housing. This is probably one of the more difficult parts of the repair. You don't want to go too far in because there is a ribbon on the speaker that you don't want to damage. So be careful of that. Just going to pry around. As you're prying, just go ahead and use the pry tool to break the adhesive to separate it from the ear pad and the speaker housing. Once you got a good portion of it open, go ahead and just use your hand to peel the rest of the ear pad off. Like so, and go ahead and just set that aside. So once we've removed the ear pad, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these four screws. They are the Phillips Plus screwdriver, the 1.5. We do have that available on our website as well. Once we remove the screw, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to pry up the speaker housing. You can use a flathead screwdriver to do that. Just want to go in underneath here and just slightly pry it up. Don't pull too hard because there are ribbons that are hidden behind the speaker housing that you don't want to damage. So once you have pried it up, what we're going to do is there's a ribbon, as you can see right there. We're going to just gently peel the ribbon off the speaker housing. It is adhered on there. Go ahead, peel that off like so, so that we got plenty of room to work with. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and unsolder our wires. Once we have done that, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove these two screws that are holding this ribbon down to the power button. Once again, all the tools that you see me using in this video, they are available on our website. The link will be in the description down below. Once we've removed the screws, go ahead and put this metal plate aside and you can use your handy dandy flathead to unplug this ribbon from the power button like so. Once we have done that, go ahead and move the speaker aside. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unplug this ribbon from the power button board and we're going to just take this out and set that aside as well and to make sure that we don't lose the power button you could go ahead and take that out put it aside as well next step go ahead and peel the sticker up there's going to be a screw located there and what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and remove the center screw Once we have done that, go ahead and peel this wire out of the 
hinge there. You, if you can, you could use a heat gun to apply some heat. Um, I know a lot of people don't have heat guns, so I'm just gonna show you how I do it with just a solder iron. Lightly run it on the glued area as you're pulling the wire. Like so. Once we have done that, go ahead and use your flathead to clean off this black goo. And you're, wanna go, you're gonna go ahead and do the same thing for this ribbon. Be careful, don't pierce the ribbon, don't tear it, be very gentle, take your time with this. Because these ribbons are connected to the boards and you can't replace them unless you're replacing the board. All right, so once you have gone ahead and removed this goo and just kind of broke this ribbon loose the next step that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and grab this cup pinch it right here and just pull on it and you're going to see these <clears throat> gaskets pop out like so take the cup off and set it aside. So once we have done that, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and follow the same steps. We're gonna free this wire from the hinge, clean off this goo, and we're gonna follow the same steps with the ribbon. Once we've done that, go ahead and clean off the goo like so. And the next thing is we're gonna go ahead and do the same for the ribbon. And if you do have a heat gun, you could apply a little bit of heat to this. It will make it a little easier. I know some people don't have access to a heat gun, but once we have freed this ribbon up a little, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and remove these six screws. Once all six screws have been removed, go ahead and pry this up. And what I like to do is, I like to take the pry tool and just kinda open this hinge up because it's gonna prevent you from causing damage to the gasket there. So go ahead and just pop that into one side Pry it up like so, and then you can easily pop it out. On this side, once you have popped that out, go ahead and just slide this piece down like so. And we're gonna take our pry tool and we're just gonna go underneath this piece just to kind of break the adhesive a little bit. And you don't have to take that fully off. You could just uh, take it off to that point where you got plenty of room to work with. 
and right here is the battery. We're gonna go ahead and use our pry tool to pry the battery out of there. It is placed right into the Bluetooth board. What we're gonna do is you can use your solder iron or a heat gun for this. I'm gonna, I recommend that you use a heat gun. I have this set to 235 degrees Fahrenheit. We're just gonna lightly, don't apply too much heat, lightly apply some heat as you pull on the battery. And once you remove the battery, go ahead, set it aside, and while the glue that's on the battery connector is still warm, go ahead and try to just clean it off as best as you can. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and dispose the battery that you are replacing. You know, we're gonna be installing the new battery. We do sell these on our website as well. The link will be down in the description below. So for this process, we're gonna go ahead, plug the battery back in. Use your flathead to make sure that it's fully plugged in, push in the clip like so. Once that is complete, we're gonna go ahead and place the battery back into its place. Once we have done that, go ahead and close this up. You can see that there's little pins right there and there are holes on this metal bracket. Make sure everything lines up Press it down, inspect it, make sure that no wires are popping out. Once you have confirmed that, go ahead and secure these six screws. Also, why we recommend cleaning the goop off of the ribbon and the speaker wire is because a lot of the times over time, the glue will cause these to tear because there's no room. So you wanna make sure you clear that out. If you're taking this side apart, might as well you clear it out to prevent any damage to the, to the ribbon and the wire so that you could get more life out of your headphones. Anyway, once we have done that, we're gonna go ahead and assemble this part. As you can see, there's a screw and it goes in there. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this piece, place it underneath the screw line it up and you're gonna just go ahead and slide slide this piece right back up like so once you've done that clip one side in and then go ahead and just clip this side back in and go ahead and test the hinge the pull action, make sure that it's sliding nice and smoothly, that nothing seems like it's in the way. Once we have done that, we're gonna go ahead and put our speaker cup back on. We're gonna go ahead and use our handy dandy screwdriver just to kind of clean out the hole. Um, sometimes I'll even use like a little bigger Phillips flathead to just kind of create some more wiggle room for the wire. And if there's any excess goo where the ribbon goes, just go ahead, clean it up. Once we've done that, go ahead, feed the speaker wire through and go ahead and put the ribbon through the opening. If you do have tweezers, it can also help.
Sorry, I had to go a little off camera there just to get the ribbon into the slot. Once we have done that, go ahead and line up the housing with the rubber gasket. Make sure that all the ends of the gaskets are showing through this uh, through the housing speaker cup housing once you see that they are all visible go ahead and put your center screw back in and once we have done that we are ready to push these through So to push these through, I'm gonna go ahead and use a pry tool. And with this pry tool, I'm just gonna go ahead and try to push these ends. I'm just gonna go ahead and push them in, force them through the openings. And once you get like a little bit, you can grab anything that's more useful to kind of just hook in, pull it. I'm gonna use these pliers. You don't wanna clamp down too hard so that you're not cutting them, but these pliers or anything that's gonna be able to hook this and pull it through, anything that can assist you will make this a little more easier. I recommend that you try to at least get two in on the side and then do the ones that are in the back here before you do the front because if you save the back for last it's going to be very difficult to get these last two in. So just kind of get the ones in on the sides, these ones, just so that it's being held and then go ahead and do the ones up top and just work your way to the bottom. Once we have pushed the rubber gaskets through to the cup, we're gonna go ahead and install our power button. We're just gonna place it back in like so. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our power button and pop it right back in, line it up with the two screw holes. For this, once you do that, just kind of hold it down and test the button function. Make sure that you hear it click. Once we have confirmed that it does, we're going to go ahead, plug this ribbon back in. We're going to take the speaker. Plug this ribbon in as well. Once you have plugged it in, this is how it should look. Once we have done that, go ahead and take this metal plate, place it back on the button, and we're going to go ahead and install the two screws that we removed. Once we have successfully plugged the ribbons back into the button and installed this metal bracket with the two screws, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and solder our speaker wire back to the speaker. Remember that the copper and the red wire is always on the positive side. And for this one, just for the sake of my hand, fingers so I don't burn them, 
I'm gonna just use tweezers to get the last wire soldered in. Once we have done that, next step is go ahead and close the speaker back over the cup. And you wanna make sure that where the screws go, that they line up with all of these four pins. So we're just gonna go ahead and place it over like so. Inspect, make sure that you don't see the speaker wire in any of the holes. Check the sides, make sure nothing is pinched. Once you've confirmed that, go ahead and put the four screws back in. Once we have done that, the next thing that we have to do is install the ear pad back on. But before we do that, it is really important that we remove the old adhesive off the speaker or the ear pad and the old adhesive off the speaker as well. For this, you can use whatever is gonna help you. It's sometimes it's quite difficult to do that, but yeah, have at it. If you guys figure out an easier way to do this, removing the adhesive, let us know in the comments down below. We'd love some new ideas, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove any excess or old adhesive. All right, if you're not able to get all of the adhesive off, that's fine, it's not the end of the world. Just make sure that where there's a lot of it, try to clean it off as best as possible, especially where there's like the thicker areas. Go ahead and take that off and just whatever you can do, do your best. Um, the tape that we have for the ear pads is pretty strong. So just go ahead and clean off what you can. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same for our ear pad. If you're looking to replace your ear pads, we do sell these on our website as well. All right, so once you have cleaned off as much as you can, it's not the end of the world if you're not able to get it all off, but just try to get as much off as possible so that it's smooth. Like you don't want it to be sticking up or have any bumps, so just try to remove as much as you can just to smooth it out. If there's a little bit on the ear pad and the speaker housing, that's fine. It, should, it shouldn't be any issues or cause any issues. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and install the tape. We're gonna first install it onto the ear pad. So with this tape, you're gonna wanna go ahead and have the ear pad at a slight angle. And there on the ear pad, you're gonna see that there are two holes. One is more bigger than the other. And on the ear pad, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the big hole or the tape, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that the big hole matches up with that one and vice versa with the small. So it's kind of at an angle. It's a little weird, but trust me, it works. Once you've done that, line them up, go ahead and just place the tape on there. Make sure that it adheres to the ear pad like so, go ahead, peel the top layer off. And remember when you place the ear pad, you wanna make sure that the line on the ear pad is facing the power button. And you're gonna notice that there are two pins right here 
on the speaker housing, those two pins are the ones that go into the holes that are cut onto the ear pad. So you're just gonna wanna go ahead, line them up like so. You can also make sure that the line is lined up with the ear pad or the line is lined up with the button to ensure that they're in the proper setting. And once you've done that, just go ahead and press around on the ear pad to secure it and adhere it to the speaker housing. And that is how you replace the battery on your Beats Solo Pro headphones. Once you have done that, you have successfully uh, replaced the battery. Go ahead, test them out, make sure everything is working perfectly fine and swipe up and follow us for more. Don't forget to subscribe.